Hi, my name is Vicki. I am a volunteer with Carolina Border Collie Rescue and I'm a foster parent. So I received my foster dog on Thursday evening and she came from a shelter and um, was in the shelter since last Saturday. Uh, pretty shut down. She was owner surrendered uh, with her person being elderly and she had to go into a long-term care center and uh, so therefore the there wasn't anybody for the dogs to go to, so they were surrendered. She's been pretty shut down the whole week. She wasn't eating at all, and I'm not really sure how much water she had. Um, and we got her Thursday evening. She's pretty terrified. We're just trying to create a space, safe space for her. So we're keeping her separated from our dogs. Uh, she's in a room by herself. We go to visit her often, uh, sing to her, talk to her, um, and try to get her to trust us. On the positive side, she's really um, started to trust us. She's eating out of my hand a little bit. She's drinking, licking some ice cubes out of my hand. So she's getting a little bit of water in, intake. Um, she is walking on her leash um, or a harness outside and back inside to her room, which is huge because initially we had to carry her in her crate inside and outside. Pretty terrified of the outside world, terrified of going in the yard. Um, so um, this is the decompression stage where we just let her be and she kind of warms up and on her own time and we're giving her that time. So I didn't expect the first few days to go like this. But welcome to real life fostering. Um, she started to decompensate yesterday, um, and you could tell she wasn't feeling well, um, kind of more so lethargic than than calm, and um, wouldn't again wouldn't step out in the yard to to void, and um, got started getting some red flags and my gut saying that we needed to take her. I spoke with the president of the rescue. And um, she agreed, and so we went ahead and took her to the vet, which was a really long process. The first vet, emergency vet we went to, um, didn't have the capabilities um, that we needed, so we had to go to a different um, emergency vet. Um, and I'm gonna have to go to the next video. So she was diagnosed with a UTI, and um, her bowels were full, and she had a temperature, um, just a lot of inflammation. She has um, two different types of bacteria in her urine as well as a whole lot of white blood count, uh, white blood cells. So um, they gave her some IV fluids and antibiotics today and I just went and picked her up. Um, she was too shut down and nervous and anxious at the vet. They probably would have kept her longer, but they, her anxiety was too high to make any progress. So they, we decided to bring her home and we're just going to monitor her real closely and I'll call them tomorrow to get an update. So we'll see how it goes. But um, I do want to share something else with you. So when you foster, um, all the medical bills are paid by our rescue. Um, so that's not something that you worry about. Um, we do consult the board of directors when we think something's going wrong and that we, the dog needs to be seen. Um, and um, so that they're in the loop and they give uh, permission for the vets to run whatever particular test. So they're always very supportive and they're always very available. Um, I had to call our president at 4.30 a.m. to um, discuss the hospitalization. So, um, yep, you know, no problem with that. So I just wanted to let you know that as a foster, you pay for food, you supply the food. Um, and like, you know, we have leashes and um, harnesses and stuff like that laying around. Um, but if you, you know, you buy her a toy or whatever, but um, all medical stuff is paid by the rescue. I'm gonna try to get little girl to eat something this evening. Um, I did put a li little bit of uh, this Victor food um, that my dogs eat on their kibble. Um, she took a few chunks of that earlier today, so I'm hoping she'll eat some of that tonight. If not, I've got her chicken, which is what she's used to, with a little bit of this bone broth in it. Um, and then I'm going to put some ice cubes in this bone broth, because normally I can get her to lick some ice cubes 
if it's covered in this, um, and she'll eat the whole ice, she'll lick the whole ice cube until it's gone, and that will give her a little bit of water in a tank, and then eventually she will drink this, I believe, is what I did earlier. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see, are you hungry? Let's start with your favorite. Let's start with your favorite. Oh, look at you go. There you go. Mmm, those are good. Good girl. You eat it out of the bowl? You want to eat it out of the bowl? Oh, perfect. Yeah. So we're taking a little walk outside. We have heard some thunder and she's not reacting really at all to the thunder. She's not freaking out. She's just kind of has her ears up a little bit. Come on, let's go. So that's good news that she doesn't really get freaked out by it. Good girl, where's that boo? Hey boo, where's that boo? Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, it is. Good girl. She's not real happy about being out here, but she's tolerating it. I'm trying to get her to go to the bathroom. Little girl uh, got up this morning. She was a little bit more animated. She's an alert. Um, she spent some time in the yard and she's eating well. Not as much as normal, I would imagine, but she's she's doing, she's holding her own on that. She still isn't drinking. Um, she did have a few ice cubes today, but that's about it. I'm gonna try to get her to drink some more tonight. Um, and she's a little more skittish today, I think, because maybe she's feeling a little bit better, so she's a little more aware of her surroundings and now just needs to start really adjusting. Um, Okay. Okay. Come here. Come here. Ah, oh, come here, baby. Come here. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. Hey. Look at her. Good girl. That's a good girl. Yeah. That's a good girl. Where's that boo? It's, a, it's okay, yeah. Oh, there you go. Good girl. Boo has been much better today uh, as compared to Friday when she kind of secluded herself in her bedroom. Um, she is more animated today. She's interacting more. Uh, she's hanging out with us in our house and around the other dogs. She doesn't really care for, um, <laughs> she doesn't really care for the dogs, but she doesn't mind them being around. Um, they don't really play together, but she's definitely, her personality is definitely coming out a little bit. She still doesn't always like an approach, so we still sit back and let her approach us. Um, but you can tell she feels a lot better. Yeah, hey girl. Hey girl. She loves being outside too. <laughs> She's gonna tear up the grass. <laughs> this little girl has to go to the vet today. Um, she has a well check. She, I think she already knows something's up. Um, not sure how it's going to go. Um, we're going to have to put her in the crate and lift the crate and put it in the car um, because she won't go on her own. She doesn't load with a collar or a harness yet, um, which is we're working on, but it's not it's not going so well so far. Um, 
but um, I will keep you updated on what we find out. Uh, she does have some pain in her shoulder and her back legs, so I'm gonna get him to check that out too. So how does a vet work when we're fostering? Um, so I spoke with the vet liaison this morning uh, with the Carolina Border Collie Rescue, and we talked about the vet visit, and um, it's a good time to check in with the vet liaison because she's very aware of kind of what needs to be happen when we go to the vet. Um, so we talked about uh, different options for pain medicine for her if we need that, as well as um, um, x-rays and, um, and she's registered under the vet liaison's uh, name at the vet. So when the vet visit is concluded, the vet will call uh, the vet liaison at CBCR and they will pay for it directly. So I don't, I don't come out of pocket for it. Um, I don't have to pay for it and then get reimbursed. I could, but the rescue is really good at just going ahead and paying, paying the medical stuff up front. So just wanted to let you know how to, how we walk through uh, that process. So she is here at the vet. Um, she's actually doing better than she did last time. Of course, she was not feeling well last time. Um, she is panting, um, but not any more than what my other dogs do. So I'm very pleased that she came out of the crate, which she didn't do last time. So, um, so pretty, I'm pretty impressed um, with her right now. Good morning. Boo did really well at the vet yesterday. Um, she was pretty anxious and she was ended up being very lethargic yesterday afternoon, but that's probably due to vaccines as well. They took a lot of x-rays and she does have some arthritis throughout her body. Her right shoulder, um, her feet, if you look at her feet, her feet, she walks on the back of, backs of her feet um, and that's due to some arthritis or um, and or nutritional deficit. Um, she does have some back knee trauma where both of her knees have been in some sort of injury or blunt force trauma. Um, and they're kind of ugly on the x-ray. Um, and she's probably in a good deal of pain with those. So we have her on um, a anti-inflammatory and pain medicine twice a day for right now. Um, she will probably end up doing some rehabs and physical therapy long-term. So I had a couple of questions come in, so I wanted to um, answer those. Uh, they guesstimate that she is five years old. Um, of course, her body uh, physically seems to be dealing with older issues. Um, and she does sleep through the night. She doesn't bark or whine or anything when she goes to bed. Um, she sleeps soundly when in the morning time when she um, wakes up, or actually we, we woke up at uh, 5.30 this morning and she didn't get out of bed till 7.45. Um, so she waits until you wake up or she might sleep longer than you. Um, she's kind of a Velcro dog as far as like coming outside. She doesn't want to go outside without me. Um, but then once she's outside, she'll, you know, explore on her own. I don't have her on leash yet. Um, she did wear her collar yesterday. I'm going to put her collar on in a few minutes um, and try to get her used to that. And then we'll start walking her on leash on Wednesday, tomorrow and see if I can't get her going on that. Um, she's still not eating very well. Um, she was given chicken her whole life, so it's really the only thing that she wants, and sometimes even that she won't eat right now. So we're monitoring that, um, but she is drinking uh, very well and going to the bathroom okay. Um, so she's just really sweet. So we've been working on Boo wearing a collar the past few days, and she's gotten kind of used to that. Um, so now we're working with her on leash um, to do some walks. She needs to walk three short walks a day. Um, so we have moved from doing the walks in our yard to uh, walking down the street a little bit, a little on private road. So it's real quiet down here. There's not people out or dogs out or anything like that. Um, so she's doing really well. Um, I think three laps back and forth to the mailbox is about a quarter mile, so she will pancake after that. Um, but hopefully we can go a little bit longer each time, but not too long, um, but just enough to get her, her, her bones moving uh, and feeling better. Um, but she's doing really well with the walk.
So Boo's on her first long walk. Um, she's got Nat as her partner there leading the way and that seems to comfort her and makes her feel a little bit better. Um, this is the first long walk that we've done. Um, I still have her on a regular collar and um, a slip leash in case she gets spooked, but I'm just holding on to this one really. Um, I don't have any tension on either. She's doing just fine. She's, you can see that the leashes are really loose. Um, I think she's a little skittish just from the houses and the cars, but um, I don't think she spent much time outside at her previous owner. Um, so she's just trying to get used to the world. Um, and I think, again, since Nat is here with her, um, she seems to be comfortable exploring. Um, we have Allie over here who's staying her distance, but she's doing really well and seems to be enjoying the outside. So I've been trying to teach Boo to go to her room when I'm going out to the store on an errand. So let's see if she'll go. Come on, Boo. Let's go. Kennel. Come on, Boo. Kennel. Good girl. She'll do a flyby sometimes. I want to go in a different room. Come on, Kennel. Kennel. Good girl. Thank you. She waits so patiently when I get home. And look at that toe wag. Hey, girl. Hey. Want to go outside? Let's go outside. Boo, come on, let's go outside. I heard you. I hear you. There you go. So in the mornings, Boo is a little standoffish. Um, she likes to go hide behind the coffee table and um, sometimes it's hard to get her to warm up for the day. Um, so I started coming out in the mornings with her to just spend some one-on-one -on -one time sitting on the steps with her. Um, I do give her a couple of pieces of hot dog. That's her high value treat. And um, I have one, one of those pieces has her medication in it. So that's kind of how we kind of start our interaction um, in the morning. And, um, and then she starts to warm up throughout the day. She did get a bath last night. Um, she needed a second one. We gave her one when we first got her because she was so filthy. But um, she um, had another one last night. Um, did really fairly well. She was shaken and she did cry a little bit. But she was not aggressive in any way. But she tolerated it really well. Um, she, I, her most sensitive part was putting my hands on her tummy. Um, and like I said, she just cried and she shaked just a little bit, not too much. Um, she didn't care for the bath, but she tolerated it okay. Um, no issues there. And um, so I'll try to get her feet trimmed a little bit today and get her brushed real well today. Hopefully she'll let me do that. Um, she does have a vet visit this afternoon. Um, we hope that she'll get some medical clearance and that her UTI and her hookworms will be all done um, and we can move forward with everything. So. Um, I'll keep you updated. So in order to get Boo to the vet, we have to place her in her crate and then place her on a cart. Um, we can't pick her up because of her knees and her hips and the pain that she has in those. It's really uncomfortable for her. And um, she can't jump into the car either. We don't have a ramp yet. So if I'm gonna have her much longer, I'll have to get a ramp and try to start training her on that. Um, but um, I need to see what the plan is going to be after the visit today. Um, so they meet us outside with a cart and we roll her in. We just we just transfer the cart the crate onto the cart and we roll her in. And somebody will be in in a few minutes and we'll take the crate to the ground and get her out of it for the exam. Um, but you can tell she's pretty anxious. Um, she did have a little bit of medication prior to coming um, to kind of take the edge off a little bit. Boo did really well at the vet yesterday. She was nervous to start with, but she immediately calmed down after, I guess, well, not immediately, I guess. I guess it took about 10 minutes. Um, she did really well. She um, was calm. She allowed the vet to examine her all over. Um, she really did a great job. I was really impressed with her. 
Regarding the results from the vet, um, her urine was clean, and so she's all healed from that. We finished up the three weeks of pain meds and anti-inflammatories with her uh, for the first protocol. We're now on to the second um, uh, stage, which is over the next month, we're going to try some different medications, see if we can get her feeling better. She's pretty uncomfortable with her arthritis and her, and her previous injuries. Um, so the, it's really about focusing on the quality of life. So she started Adequin injections last night and um, Galaprant today, and we'll get her on a joint supplement and see if that's going to make her a little more comfortable where she can do some more things. Um, and we'll go from there and reevaluate over the, uh, in the next four weeks.